So x axis positively that way, y axis is the edge of the disk positively that way, z axis as before, positive direction vertically to up to the ceiling. Zero, zero, 010, this point has coordinates zero for x, negative three for y, and seven for z. Yeah. So this is the point in question on the surface, and we are looking at, firstly, the gradient vector. The, the way we started this lecture, we said the two numbers, 0 and 0.8, represent as a pair a special vector called the gradient vector. And this vector, where does it live? in this picture, the gradient vector. Where is it? It's an object. How can I place it in, in this uh, picture? It's a very good question. If you know the answer, you really got the notion of the gradient. Okay, think again. The gradient is a vector of two coordinates, zero and point eight, right? Zero measuring the rate of change with respect to x direction, and point eight measuring the rate of change with respect to y direction. Together, zero comma point eight. It's a two-dimensional object. It lives in R2. So, we can consider it in a domain. For this point, pre-image of this point is here, zero negative three, at this point in the domain, there is a vector, 0, comma, 0.8, which points this way, along towards the positive y-axis. And that vector is the gradient vector for this point. For this point, it also lives in the domain. Right? Oh, I should have used the blue color. You know the picture that we looked earlier with blue arrows? So that's your blue vector there. Now, this blue vector, if you consider a plane that passes through this vector and contains the z-axis, that cross-sects my umbrella. And by doing so, it determines this curve on the umbrella. And so the gradient vector points into a specific direction. We'll talk about in a second what do I mean. Now, that's the gradient vector. What have we just been talking about? The directional derivatives. What are they? Well, yesterday, on Monday, on Wednesday, we talked about partial derivatives. Partial derivative with respect to x is our way of measuring the rate of change with respect to x-axis, yes? That was our rate of change with respect to x-axis. This was our rate of change with respect to y-axis, yeah? But, <coughs> We've got more directions now. Can't we measure the rate of change in this direction, in this direction, in this direction, in this direction? You see? You've got so much more now to measure, and that's what we call the directional derivative. So at this point, I am now measuring, or you are now able to find directional derivative in any direction you want. Okay, this direction, this direction, this direction. How do you, how do you find, how do you encode this direction? It's that vector u, u unit vector u, which lives in the domain. So you look at this point, the pre-image of this point in the domain here, and you say, I want to find the rate of change in that uh, direction u. Okay, and that direction u, imagine plane passes through this yellow vector, and cross-sects my umbrella past this point. So this vector kind of lifts and points that way. <coughs> that, that's the direction that you're differentiating with respect to. That's the rate of change you're finding, okay? Now, next concept. I'm going to ask you a few questions. This is your intuitive understanding of the rates of change of surfaces here, very important. <coughs> so I'm just gonna, so vectors are funny things, right? They live on one plane, but you can always shift them around as long as you don't change the collinearity, right? They're kind of, it's the same object. Anyway, so what is, uh, 
So we found that number there for different surface, but nevertheless, the directional derivative, had, it's a number, it's a negative number. So I'm going to ask you, if you look at the directional derivative at my point again, and this direction, would, can you guess what the value is? Or at least tell me, is it gonna be positive or negative, first hand? It's a very conceptual, hard question. If you know the answer, you learn a lot today. Okay, so this is the vector u, unit vector that came from here. I just lifted it up par in parallel way, illustrations. What's the directional derivative at this point, x naught, y naught, same point, in this direction? Positive or negative? negative. Who said that? What's your name? <laughs> okay. Negative, because... <laughs> So now the rate of the same understanding, geometric understanding of the rates of change applies. For one unit change in this direction, this direction, what's the unit change in the z variable? Do we go up or do we go down? So you start this point, let's turn, these guys can't see. So if we're going this way in the umbrella, in this direction, think about cross-secting my umbrella by a plane that passes through the red stick and goes vertically down. So this B curve, that's the curve here. For one unit change in this direction, we are dropping down in altitude, don't we? Not up, we're going down. So the rate of change is negative. And you can guess it like 0.3 or whatever you want. So it's a number there. One unit change in this direction, you're going down. That's much. Okay, that's what the value is. If you go, in, what's the rate of change in this direction? Positive or negative? Positive. This direction. This direction. You got it, guys. Okay, and so this is the whole circle of different values. Now, my last question is, which direction would give you the maximum number and which direction would give you the maximum negative number? Here go, it's not gonna fit. Come on. Guys, please don't let me fall down. I'm flying to Hamburg tonight, I can't break the leg. Here we go. Assume you are a skier. Who, how many of you are here um, uh, go skiing sometimes? Down, I mean not cross country skiing, like um, downhill. Yeah, so imagine you are on the top of a mountain and you're trying to ski. Yeah, you're standing there, like ready. And depending on the level of your uh, abilities, you choose which path to go down, right? It's your choice at that point. So if you are really, really good at it and you, you, want, you want to go for the high adrenaline, which direction do you choose? Straight down, oh, I get to the mountains this way. In terms of the gradients, steepest. steepest decrease in values of f. If your function f is your function of altitude on the mountain, yeah, the direction that you will choose if you're the adrenaline junkie, you choose the direction of the opposite to the gradient. Take the gradient vector and multiply each coordinate by negative one. That's the direction you go for. Now. If you're like me, and not very experienced, you don't want to break a leg, you would go this way, right? Or, or that way. Not quite in the direction of the opposite of the gradient, yeah? But sort of, you choose your, you choose your value. The negative value of decrease in the values of the function, it's up to you to choose. And you can choose as little as, as you want, right? You can go like parallel for a while. So that's the notion of the gradient. They inform us about the shape of the surfaces and inform us about the steepness of the decreases and increases in values. So the other question, if you want to climb a mountain now, so at the bottom of the mountain, yeah, and you want to climb it up, the fastest rate of ascent 
is along which direction? Yes. What? Yeah, in terms of the language that we introduced today, uh, today, in terms of the gradient. The gradient, the gradient points you, if you're at the bottom of the mountain trying to climb it, calculate the gradients and that will point you in the direction of the fastest increase in values. So the climber, the rivers and you know, other risks aside, that's the direction you go to, which is at the right angles to to level curves. So if you have a topographical map, topographical map with level curves, to map that route, you just go right angles to level curves, right angles, right angles, and you've mapped it up for you, okay? Vice versa. So this is the concept of directional derivatives with a note that the fastest rate of change occurs in the direction of the gradient, and the fastest decrease in values Occurs in the direct in the opposite direction. That's what you should take away. Right, guys, I'm off to Hamburg for like eight days. Mary is coming, and then I'm back again. So be nice to Mary. Okay.